Hi there, Corey here, and today I want to show you how to make a modal form using Django, Tailwind, and HTMX. Let's get into it. So I'm going to start with a little demo of what we're going to build today, which is the settings pop-up in our translation app here. So you can see when I click the gear, a little pop-up comes up, lets me edit the project's name, demo edited, and I can select different languages. You can see before I had just English and German, now I will add Spanish and French. And when I click Save, you'll see I'll get this little message here. The new name pops up, the new languages show up in the table. And this is all built with almost exclusively pure Django forms and just a little splash of HTMX and JavaScript. All right, so the first thing I want to do now is I want to go back in time and show you what this looked like before I made these changes. So let's check out our demo branch. Okay, so now when we refresh the page, you can see what it was like before. And so when I click the gear icon, it will just take me to sort of like a more traditional Django edit form. I could remove some languages, change the name, and get back to the same thing. So now I'm going to go through all the changes necessary to convert that traditional edit workflow to an HTMX-based modal workflow with the nice new UX. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add a modal to this page. And I'm going to use the Daisy UI modal element for that. And I'm just going to grab the HTML for this dialog modal here. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that into my template file. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste that at the bottom of my template here. And then I'm going to give the modal a slightly different ID, maybe projects settings modal. And then I'm going to move this on click event to the gear button, which is defined up here. And for now, we'll just comment out this href link. So if I did this right, hopefully we should see modal popping up when we click that button. Forgot to delete the other button there. OK. So the next thing we want to do is we want to wire up the HTMX events for this. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring this href back. Uh, but we're going to change it to an hx get. And that will tell HTMX to get the contents of that URL when we click the button. We're also going to change the target. So we're going to, we, what we want to do is we want to swap the um, page that we get from there into the modal. So we're going to set an hx target. And the target is going to be the project settings modal. And finally, we want to tell HTMX the trigger for this event. So we'll say HX trigger equals click. And so now, when we click this button, it should fetch this URL and swap it into our modal element while still firing this on click event. So let's see if that works. OK, <laughs> so that kind of worked. Uh, but we swapped into the wrong thing. So we didn't actually want to swap it in there. We wanted to swap it into this inner thing. So we need to define a new ID here. Let's say maybe inner modal. And then we'll change this to inner modal. OK, that looks somewhat better. So the next obvious problem is that our edit page had all of our sort of navigation and everything else around it. And so now that we are no longer using any of that, we're showing it in a dialog, we can just get rid of that. So let's go ahead and make those changes. So we're going to go ahead and open up that page. And then we're just going to kind of like remove the extending of our base template and remove the template blocks and probably even remove the styling around that component. And now if we go back here, we are now seeing a pretty nice modal pop-up. So let's see what happens when we save. And looks like that didn't do anything. And the reason that didn't do anything is because we need to now tell the form to save to a specific location. Previously, it was saving to itself, but now it needs to save to a new target. So we're going to say action, and then we're going to reverse the URL of the 
save page, which happens to be the same URL as the get page. So now let's see if that works. So we can enter a new name here and click save. And things look pretty good. But there is a problem. So what happens if there's a validation error? And for the purposes of this demo, I have added a validation function on the name here, where if there is a Z in the name, it will raise a validation error. So let's see what happens if we put a Z in the name. Oh boy, that doesn't look very good. And so now what's happening is it's rendering our HTMX page with the validation errors, but since that page is just this components with no styling, it is a big mess. And so to fix this, what we actually need to do is we need to do an HTMX post instead of a regular form post. And so in our project settings page, we can replace this method equals post with a HX post to that URL. So now let's try this again. Aha, oh, little problem here. That's getting swapped in because the form keeps getting replaced. So now this is working, but what happens if we remove the Z? Oh boy. So now what's happening is that HX post is swapping the entire form page back into here. And of course we don't want to have this little Russian doll situation of forms inside pages, inside forms, inside pages. So it's a pretty clever little way to fix this. And the way it works is we're going to return a special little view from a successful form post. And then we're going to add a little JavaScript events to handle that view and process it accordingly. So, so now instead of returning this redirect over here, we're just going to return a regular HTTP response. And we're actually going to return just a completely empty response. And what that allows us to do is on the front end, we can catch that empty response and handle it accordingly. So to do that, we're going to go to our main template file and we're going to add a little block here in the JavaScript section. And in that block, we are just going to do something like this. So we are going to add an event listener to the before swap event. This is the event that gets called right before HTMX tries to swap something into the page. So we'll check if the event target has a certain class, in this case, product form. And this is so that we don't trigger this logic on uh, other HTMX events that might be firing on different elements of the page. And then if it is the right class and there is no response, remember we've turned an empty response, then we just reload the page. And so the last thing we need to do is we need to add this class to the element that is getting swapped, which in this case is the form itself. So if I did that right, then now when we submit this form, we'll first check the validation. Validation looks good. And now when we see when we submit the form, we still get the messages. We still get this nice update. You can see if I add languages, those languages will pop up in the table. So pretty nice UX. And this is still sort of like 95% stock Django forms, which is really cool, really powerful. It means you can sort of incrementally add these little bits of improved usability into your projects without having to change how everything works and end up in JavaScript JSON world. So I hope that was helpful. This is how I added a HTMX form modal to my Django project. And I will see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.